Hi, I'm Kai Stotz, project lead for CMOC, a scalable interactive model of an off-world community. We live in an amazing time. We're just four or five years from returning to the moon and within a decade of placing boots on Mars. But unlike science fiction films, living in these harsh environments is not easy. CMOC is a simulation of a completely sealed human habitat on the moon or Mars. We've taken 40 years of NASA data with guidance and input from Paragon Space Development Corporation, the University of Arizona, and Arizona State University to bring to you a high fidelity simulation and interactive web interface. So you are in charge of building your habitat, choosing the number of astronauts, the duration of the stay, the number of solar panels, batteries, your greenhouse, the plants you want to bring, and you set that simulation in motion to see how well you've done. And in the iterative process of science discovery, You'll be changing those variables one at a time until you achieve the balance that you require for the duration of your mission. I'm going to spend just a few minutes taking you through the CMOC website and the application itself to give you an introduction to the interface and the depth of the simulation that we've provided. I'd like to give you a quick tour of the CMOC website and then take you directly into the use of CMOC uh, for your first time through. So let's start with the first time user uh, page at CMOC. This page is advised not because CMOC is too complicated to learn on your own, it's relatively intuitive, but because this gives you a sense of some of the things you might be looking for when you use CMOC uh, for your first time, second time, third time through. When you get into CMOC itself, you'll be given an opportunity to select from the presets menu. And the presets are designed to give you known cases before you explore on your own. So these are four configurations of habitats that we've designed, giving you the known outcome and also an opportunity to ask some basic questions about the outcome of that particular mission. What worked, what didn't, what could we learn from that experience? Such that when you go from a one human preset to a one human and a whole bunch of radishes preset, it's really the exact same configuration with the addition of radishes. And you think, well, how can radishes affect my simulation or my living on Mars? And you might be surprised at the outcome and how much it really does change. We then go into four humans, which is again based on the one human preset, but now we have everything the same except we've added three more humans. You can imagine the outcome is not very good um, because you've got to modify a number of other things before you're able to support four humans in the exact same habitat designed for just one. The final uh, preset is called Full Garden, and this offers a, a rich more of a rich diversity of plants uh, within the habitat and for humans. And again, the outcome is, is much more complex than just for humans alone. I will encourage you to also explore the rest of the website. We have a page specifically for advanced users. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. You don't have to be a computer wizard, but it gives you some advanced things you can do. Um, there's also a description for how to download and use your data. If you're an educator, you may enjoy the classroom lessons, classroom examples, um, an introduction to how we've developed our curriculum. And of course, research. These are a lot of the tools and the research items that we use to develop CMOC over the previous three years. And now we're gonna go back to the first time user page. And you will click on launch CMOC here, or from the top of the website, you can go to launch CMOC here. We'll put this into a new tab. So here we find a brief introduction to CMOC, referencing a lot of the things that we just talked about on the website. There's also direct access to the uh, four PDFs, which are our educational curriculum, an overview, and then at the bottom, you get to launch CMOC, which we'll go ahead and do. So, welcome to CMOC. So we're gonna go ahead and proceed. Now here, you can sign in as a temporary guest, or you can sign in as an account. I'll sign in to my account. And if you need to sign up and create an account, you can do so here. Um, we do not take your email address. We do not take any of your personal information. This is just a username and password such that you can keep uh, your custom configurations housed at CMOC. So when you return, all of your favorite panels and such are already set up. Okay, so we're going to sign in. Now here's where you would load simulation data, but we're going to, if you've already downloaded data from a previous run, you want to return to it or share it with a friend. Here we're going to go to new configuration. And here are the same presets that we discussed when we were back at the CMOC website. So we're gonna go ahead and run the one human preset. 
and you can see that the location is Mars. Now in this version of CMOC, we have only one location available. We're hoping to add additional locations in the future, such as other non-equatorial regions on Mars, the Moon, maybe even asteroids or somewhere on Europa, which would be a little bit of science fiction, but we would do the best to make it real. We've chosen a 10-day mission duration, a small crew quarters, one inhabitant, 100 kilograms of food, which is plenty of food uh, for a 10-day mission. We actually only need just 15 kilograms. We have one life support system. Uh, this is an environmental control and life support system. This is a mechanical and chemical system that keeps humans alive, not unlike what's on the International Space Station. No greenhouse, no plants. We have just enough solar panels to get us by and a relatively decent sized battery. Now, if you click on any one of these, for instance, it brings up a small internal wiki on the right hand side. And this gives you a lot more information about each one of these topics. In addition, we have a table of contents, so you can quickly move between uh, any one of these. And here again is a brief pre uh, interview or a brief overview of the presets. Now, the graphs. We'll come back to this again when we have a greenhouse, but as you can see, we are producing more power than we are consuming. Now, we could have done all the calculations for you and just made it work, but that's not much fun. So you do have to choose how many solar panels you want. So you can see that if I reduce this, to just 20 solar panels, I will not have enough electricity. If I increase it to 100, I have far more electricity than I need. We try to get it pretty close and a little bit beyond. And we go ahead and launch our simulation. And here we go. So the simulation has started. You can see that we have six default panels. And this particular panel mission status tells us where we are. How many hours are we into our mission? which also is calculated as Earth, Mars days and Earth days, inhabitants, etc. We can also go to this and we can change the panel to, for instance, the mission configuration, which tells you a summary of the original parameters you chose in the configuration wizard. We can also go to, this is my favorite one, the consumption breakdown. And this shows you all the electric devices that consume energy. And if you watch these popping in and out, you'll see that they correlate to what's happening on the right-hand side of the screen. This right hand side of the screen is now. That's the current, uh, that's the current experience. And so as if I back up here, you'll see that when that red line is there, what's on here? The CO2 removal sound. CO2 removal is part of the Eclipse rack and that is currently removing CO2 because we went over the tolerable 0.1%. So as we move through this simulation, you will find that it's relatively consistent. Nothing really changes from start to finish. Why? Because we don't have any plants growing. We don't have any outside influence. It's really the same thing day to day to day throughout the entire 10 days of the simulation. Over here, you can look at the oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, methane, and other variables. And here we have potable water, urine, waste, and treated water. And it's kind of fun to watch how this. we start the simulation with uh, 95, actually about 100 kilograms of treated water, which is converted into potable water and then levels out. And you'll see that over time, the potable water remains relatively consistent. We have built in, you can see the, uh, the water vapor is increasing as, and then decreasing, increasing, and then decreasing. And that's our dehumidifier, which is taking water vapor and converting it back into potable water again. So there's a lot to pay attention to here. Now we're going to stop this simulation and instead we're going to log into, we're going to create a new simulation and let's go to one human and one radish. Now we've added a greenhouse, small greenhouse, and we've added radishes. When we come to the graphs, you'll see that there's now information here. We have all this room available and we're just using this much with the radishes and we're going to launch this simulation. This time I'm gonna change the emission status to the greenhouse plant growth. And this gives you the percentage of growth of the given plant that we have. If we had more plants, more would show. So because the simulation's already done, I'm gonna pause it and I can just fast forward. Watch the plant growth here, watch this, it's very interesting. And as it moves along, as the plant gets more and more mature, look what happens to these peaks. Remember these are the CO2 being consumed and the power being drawn for the sake of, of using the CO2 scrubber in the Eclipse rack. So as we move along, those peaks get less and less, narrow, more narrow and narrow and further apart until we don't 
need the Eclipse rack anymore. If we switch back over to the power consumption breakdown, you'll find that these CO2 modules are not being used. Why? Because the plants are doing it for us. The 40 square meters of radishes is just enough to take enough carbon, take the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere such that these machines no longer have to turn on in order to do it for us. That's the whole point of CMOC, is to say, how do we find the balance between physico-chemical, meaning mechanical and chemical systems, and plant bioregeneration? Bioregeneration means that we're using plants to take in the CO2 to produce the oxygen and to give us food. So what just happened? Huge drop right there, right? So CO2 consumption is down. Okay, let's find out what happened. So let's go back to the greenhouse plant growth. Now watch that, it's at zero. Okay, so something must have happened. So we went from 100 to zero. I'm gonna go one step at a time. One step, one step, and it drops. Now let's go over here and look at biomass. So the biomass was at 11 kilograms and it drops to 5.5 kilograms. At the same time, our food was at 62 kilograms and it goes up to 67 kilograms. So that tells us that something happened. This means that the radishes were harvested. Now it takes a few more turns for them to actually be removed from the greenhouse and you can see they're now at 0% and they're starting over again. So now the radishes are gonna grow all over again. They were harvested and the Eclipse rack is activated again because there are no longer any radishes to take in the CO2 and produce oxygen. We are once again reliant on the machines to do so for us. If you're interested in learning more about all of the agents and how they interact, we encourage you to go back to the website and go to the advanced user page. From here, you can download the agents and currencies definitions. And this is a lighter version of the document that we've used in-house for three years to develop CMOC. So there's a lot of information. Here's the full table of contents. And for that particular, let's say we want to look at the table of plant growth. So this table of plant growth is based upon the work of Dr. Raymond Wheeler at NASA uh, Kennedy and many years of his work in growing each of these plants in a semi-sealed environment in which he was able to monitor all of these variables. This is what's inside of CMOC for each one of those plants. And there's a lot more information within this document that we encourage you to take a look at. Now that you're familiar with CMOC, we hope that you'll give it a try. We'd love to get your feedback, especially if you're a classroom instructor and you've integrated CMOC into your curriculum and your, class, your classroom experience. We'd love to hear from you and your students as to how you've enjoyed living on Mars. Thank you.